In this tutorial, we will learn the basics of placing and manipulating walls. The wall tool is accessed in construction mode. As you can see when you hover your mouse over the icon there are a number of preset wall types to choose from, each of which can be customized and amended as required. To select a wall type, simply click the icon at the required wall. Once you select a tool to use, the context toolbar shows the options available for working with the chosen tool. Choosing a wall type displays the placement of Right-clicking on the wall icon will open the dialog box for the wall properties. Here we can set the thickness of the wall by changing the value of the depth field. It is also possible to change the appearance of the wall by selecting a texture. By unticking the Use Slower Wall Texture box, we can amend the color or texture of just this specific wall. You can choose a new texture from the drop-down list or by clicking the right arrow and choosing Browse or using one of the suggested textures. Using this method we can texture one floor at a time or a single wall, useful for external half-rendered houses for example. In addition to simply setting the wall depth, it is possible to define the wall construction. Clicking the right arrow on the wall construction will open the dialog box for this option. You are then presented with a new set of choices. At the top of the page is a drop-down list which contains preset or saved wall constructions. Choose a new wall construction from the list and click OK as you can see the layers of this new wall construction have changed. If you do not have the correct wall construction for your requirements, simply select new and we can then create our own. Each layer in the list below can be selected and amended. Here you can change the name for each individual layer, the pattern displayed for this layer and its depth or thickness. By building up walls from new layers you can match your chosen construction materials in your plans. You can also add or remove layers as required using the buttons at the bottom of the dialog box. Moving back to the original wall properties screen, you will notice that the depth has now changed to reflect the changes made in the wall construction dialog. Click OK to accept these settings. To begin drawing our walls we need to select a method we will use to place the wall. These are all chosen from the context toolbar on the left of the screen. Initially we will use the multiple wall option for drawing. Multiple walls simply means that with each point we place it starts the new wall and finishes the previous wall at the same point. This enables rooms to be created very quickly. Here we have started the wall by left clicking the start point and dragging the mouse in the direction of the wall. You can see that the cursor is followed by a ghost image of the wall, showing where it will be placed together with the length. Before completing this wall by clicking again, you will notice that by default, the wall is being drawn along the center of its depth. This may not be correct if you are using either internal or external measurements and you will need to ensure you draw on the correct axis to match your dimensions. To change the axis on which we draw, Simply press CTRL on your keyboard and type W each time you do this the drawing line will toggle between the three available axes. Once you have selected the correct axis, you can leave click again to place the end of the first wall and start the next. Using this multiple wall placement method, you can see we can very quickly create a complete room or floor plan. You can also see that once we complete the room, it is given a name. In this case room 1. This is important as it now means our room has a floor and a ceiling. Until walls connect to create a complete enclosed area, they are a series of walls rather than a room. Once they connect, they form a room and the floor and ceiling are added automatically. Walls, as with all elements in the software, can also be amended once they have been placed. You can open up the wall properties dialog box at any time by double clicking on the wall. Here any changes you make will only affect the specific wall selected. You will see that the dialog box now has two extra functions which can be seen on the right. The first function, Wall Contour, opens an elevation view of the selected wall enabling the shape to be changed to create angled walls or sloping walls by using the simple pen tools. The second function allows you to define how the walls are affected by roofs and staircases. These functions and their uses will be explained later in the roof and staircase tutorials. Click OK to exit the dialog. We will now look at the other placement options for adding walls. These other methods can be used at any time and how you place walls will depend upon your own preference for working. Adding more walls will enable us to split our single room into more rooms. 
The single wall option allows one wall to be placed at a time, with the first click defining the start of the wall and the second click the end. Wall at right angles required you to have a reference point which you select with the first click. The wall may then only be drawn at right angles to the plane of your chosen reference. Angled wall works in the same way, although you get to define the angle you wish to wall be set to. To set the angle, first right click on the icon in the context toolbar and enter the desired angle. Click OK and your wall will be drawn at the selected angle from your reference point. The parallel wall option again requires you to define a reference by left clicking. Then simply move the cursor to where you need to draw the wall and left click again to start. This wall will then only be able to be parallel to your reference line. Our wall midway option enables you to define two points with two clicks of the mouse. Once your two points are defined, your wall can then only be drawn along the plane in the center of these two points. Finally, Parallel at Distance takes the Parallel Wall tool a stage further. Working in the same way as a parallel wall, you are prompted to enter the distance from the reference point before drawing the wall, ensuring accurate spacing. 